I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 101 of Ask Dave. This is a continuation of Ask Dave 100 in which I introduced antenna modeling and we looked at uh, the effect of height on a dipole. Well, we're going to take that just a little bit further today based on some queries that I got uh, from viewers. Uh, first, we're going to look at what happens to a dipole if you don't have enough room for it and so you let the ends hang down. What happens then? Uh, another viewer asked, what happens if the dipole is kind of in the shape of a Z? It gets to an end and goes off at an end like that. And uh, the third case, I was kind of curious myself, what happens, uh, well, what's the effect of the aluminum poles that I'm using as masts holding up that dipole? Do they affect the dipole performance at all? So let's turn to the computer and take a look at what we've got here. So we're going to look at the three variations of the standard dipole. Now our baseline design is the 20 meter backyard dipole at 30 feet. Then we're going to try drooping the ends down, the straight down, two different lengths, 5.7 feet, 8.3 feet. Where did I come up with those numbers? Well, I started with uh, 6 and 8, and uh, I had to adjust them a little bit to get the SWR reasonable. It turns out uh, the SWR is very sensitive to tuning. We're going to do both of these at 30 feet, but uh, take a look at what the uh, effect is. Then we're going to look at the ends going off in other directions. We'll do one at 30 feet, one at 20 feet, and then the masts first isolated from ground, second in contact with the ground, and another one that's further away from the antenna. Okay, so let's dive in. This is the baseline case. A backyard dipole 20 meters. Sorry for the busy chart, but everything's right here on one page. This is what the antenna looks like. Uh, X and Y are your ground. It's up at 30 feet right here. Uh, see, we see the Z is at 30 feet in both cases. And the Y length right here gives you the length of the dipoles, 33.43 feet of number 12 wire. And we have 11 segments on the thing. We note that it uh, gives a 2 to 1 SWR in the phone portion of the band. Uh, we could adjust that a little bit by making the antenna slightly longer, but we've got a very nice dipole elevation pattern here. Okay, so this is our baseline, and we're going to see what happens when we start changing things from here. All right, at this point, we're going to drop. Now, what this this is not the same length dipole in here what we've done is taken the dipole out here and let it come down like this so that this length up here is only uh, 23.43 feet so it's much shorter and then we've let a droop come down here okay now the purple lines are the current and we notice that there are current in the droopy parts but there's some good news I tweaked the length on this just a little bit so that uh, we got the SWR under 1.5 across the entire band very nice elevation pattern uh, uh, for a dipole actually everything looks pretty good uh, in this one right here we're doing well one thing I should point out it says that the model contains loss well, it did that on the uh, other one, too. There was a little bit, but not enough to say anything. This is our baseline. Okay, let's go down to this one. There is some loss. You lose 1 dB. Okay, 1 dB. So, yes, uh, there is now a compromise that you're doing. 1 dB is not very much, and you lose that much, uh, I mean, just from... Uh, normal difficulties hanging a dipole but if you only have 23 feet to put a 20 meter dipole in which is quite a bit longer than that and you just let the ends droop down like that 
you'll find that the ends do radiate. See, they've got current in them right there. And there's the current in the main thing, and it is center fed, just like an ordinary dipole. Yeah, very nice SWR over here, good elevation pattern. I put in all these things for reference. All right, let's take a look at the next case now. We're going to droop some more. Okay, droop by 8. 0.3 feet at each end and you can see it here. I've offset it a little bit so that it kind of moves the z-axis over a little bit. But we still see that we get radiation in there, get a nice SWR across the band, good pattern, and uh, now the top of the antenna is less than 19 feet across. Okay, now there is some loss. Model contains loss. 1.14 db. So the shorter you make this and the more you droop the ends, uh, then you're going to lose something. I mean, this is a compromise antenna and you lose a little bit. 1.14 db at HF is not very much. So this is a perfectly viable option. It is a compromise antenna, but not terribly by much. Okay, now the next antenna that we're going to look at is the Z. Now, here's your uh, diagram of the antenna. Everything is 30 feet off the ground, okay? Everything's 30 feet off the ground. But we've shortened this right here, okay, by 8.3 feet in each leg of the Z. This might be doing it this way because you've got a tree growing back here or something like that. And this is all you've got. And the amount at the top, less than 19 feet in this leg right here. Okay. You still get a nice pattern. You can make it work across the dial. And you do have a little bit of loss. About a dB. Okay. A dB. That's not that much. That's pretty good antenna right there. If that's what you can get up, you probably will be pretty happy with that. Now, let's find out what happens when we take the same antenna now and drop it from 30 feet to 20 feet. 20 feet is how tall my masts are because I use two pieces of uh, aluminum top rail fence. Well, let's take a look and see what we've got here. Here's the same Z, but now this is only 20 feet. Okay, there's uh, some loss in here. A little bit less than 75 feet. Notice how the the azimuth pattern is slightly offset. The real axis of symmetry is through here, even though the main antenna comes along here and over there like that. What we're doing is kind of skewing the pattern a bit. Note that we get good SWR across the band and I put the top um, at 20 feet, okay, and we know that the lengths and stuff are all given here. I tweaked them a little bit to uh, get a good SWR across the band. So, if this is the arrangement that will work for you, it will work quite well. This is a good 20 meter antenna. It would be nice, of course, to have a lower elevation angle, but we can't have everything. You can probably make lots of contacts with that. Okay, now I am kind of curious here. I use aluminum masts, and so I modeled them here first with no connection to ground. These things are floating. Well, how would I do that? Well, I'll tell you, if I just put a piece of wood underneath the antenna, as long as it's dry, it's going to insulate that pole from ground, okay? And let's see what happens. This 20 feet tall there, 20 feet tall there. Um, well, let's see, what have we done here? Actually, the Z distance is 16 feet. Okay, so quarter wave. But what uh, this shows here, what this shows here that's quite interesting, these number three and number two are metal but are not attached to the antenna. There's no connection uh, between them. But radiation off a dipole sometime well it comes off horizontally in this direction but you can actually get a vertical component in this direction okay and if it's vertical 
these are going to be sympathetic radiators. And what we see here, if you look at the current in here, there's not very much current induced. Okay, so metal masts, vertical, not a problem. I've got them here one-tenth of an inch off the ground, okay, so there's no contact with the ground. We have an ordinary dipole pattern that's kind of skewed high because um, it's so low to the ground, okay? So let's do something rather radical here. We're going to now let the bottoms contact ground. Oh my, that's the only change in this model. Look what happens. The masts become major radiators. Okay, see the, the distance between there and there and the distance between there and there. Okay, they are major radiators. They're radiating, of course, vertically and you get horizontal off in that direction and off in that. So these things are radiating and again we start getting the losses. Here's 2 dB of loss, okay? And that's a little bigger than 1 dB. Um, it's still possible to do things with, but it's, it's kind of pretty major. Now I thought, well, good grief, let's put the poles 5 feet away from the antenna. Okay, so there's 5 feet between here and here, and these are attached to ground. Sticking in the ground uh, there also. The masts are radiators. Now the, the purple is the current. It's high current at the bottom, low current at the top, high voltage at the top, low voltage at the bottom. So we're not creating a safety problem here. I just stuck this in here to show that you do get a little distortion of the pattern uh, when you put the masts in there. So even though these are five feet away, they're still radiating. So you can isolate your mast or use a non-metallic mast, like bamboo poles or trees or whatever, uh, or you can go ahead and use uh, grounded uh, masts or insulated masts. So that's what we see here in this uh, short little uh, video. Let's sum up. Well, there you have it. An idea of some interesting things that you can do with antenna modeling to answer some fundamental questions that lots of uh, newcomers have. Uh, you may just not have room for a full-length dipole, but you can drop the edges or the ends down. Okay, and now note, there'll be the high voltage point on the dipole, so you want to be careful to keep people away from those ends. Uh, but it's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. It's a tiny bit of a compromise, but not a lot. Okay, also, if you have to put one leg of that dipole out there and it's got to take a bend or something for whatever reason, that works too. It's not that much of a compromise for the antenna. And we found out some interesting things about antenna masts. Antenna masts, if they are insulated from the ground, are okay, but if they're not insulated from the ground, they are part of the antenna and need to be treated as such. Now, uh, this is what I do to isolate the antennas. Actually, I do this so that they don't sink into the ground, but um, this is the way I would keep that antenna. Uh, isolated there. Okay, so that's it. Uh, another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, good to see you all again. I look forward to your comments and please do comment. Please click like. Please subscribe and click on the bell. And also go to dcastler.com slash support for all different kinds of ways that you can support Ham Radio Answers and Ask Dave. Uh, there are some things on there, for example, like the pa how to get to the Patreon page, uh, the difference between the Patreon and the tip jar. Uh, there's also some things that if you're looking to buy on Amazon and you use a link that I've put in there, uh, your price won't change. It'll be the same. But a little piece of that will come to me and help support Ham Radio Answers. So... This is the funnest job in the world. I love it. I get to talk ham radio, and I get to talk to you. So, until we next meet, 73.